To make this beaded necklace, we're going to use fire line, and fire line is kind of a thread that's made specifically for bead stringing. It's extra strong. This one actually will hold, uh, has a six pound rating, and you don't want to use regular thread. It's a lot of work to string all these beads, and regular thread is going to break. So you definitely want to invest in true jewelry making thread, and this is fire line that we like to use. The color of this is smoke, kind of a black color. And then we've got beads. We have lots of beads. You could do this necklace with all the same beads, any beads you have. We rated our stash. We always collect beads at the end of a project if there's a couple beads left over. Keep them in a jar. And so we just dumped out some of our favorite colorful mixed beads here. And then we have a bead bug. This is optional. You could use masking tape or you can use a bead bug. It's gonna hold our beads onto the fire line. We have a beading needle. And a beading needle is important because the fire line is like thread. It's a little stiff um, at the end. It could go through some of the beads, but it's much easier to use a needle to go through all these beads. This is a size 12 beading needle, and we just got that with the fire line at the jewelry uh, center at the craft store. We have scissors to cut our fire line, and we're going to secure our knots when we're done with GS Hypo. This necklace has no clasp. This is going to be an endless, continuous necklace. So we're going to use the Hypo, GS Hypo Jewelers Glue to fix the knots. To make this endless necklace, we're going to cut a 40 inch piece of fire line. I already cut this piece. And a 40 inch piece of fire line will give us about a 30 inch necklace when we're done. And that way we can have it big enough that uh, it's a necklace you can slip over your head to put it on. You don't need a clasp. So I'm going to start by putting the needle on one end of the fire line. The fire line's a little bit stiff. You could feed some of the beads on without a needle. But the whole project will go faster if you use a needle. So I'm just going to thread my needle. And not too hard to thread because that fire line, as I said, is stiff. So I only need to feed a couple inches in through there. We're not going to double the whole thread. We're going to use a single of the thread. And I'm going to go to the other end here and I'm going to put my bead bug on the other end. This is a springy little device that clamps onto your fire line or any of your bead string and wire when you're beading and it keeps the beads from sliding off the end. You could also use a piece of masking tape for this. And then for the design of this necklace we just rated our bead stash and pulled out all kinds of beads, different sizes, and colors, they all look beautiful together. And we're just gonna do a random necklace. It's endless, it'll go round and round. You can wear any side of it in the front. So it doesn't matter where you start or where you finish, we're just gonna feed the beads on one at a time. So this is the fun part. You just look down and pick out your next bead. We tried to pick beads that were generally the same size. Some are a little bit smaller, like this one's a little bit smaller. And some are a little bigger, like this beautiful blue flower, glass flower, is a little bit bigger. And they'll just show off a little bit, but for the most part, they're all in the same size range. And you could make this necklace a little shorter or a little longer, or a lot longer if you wanted. I don't want those two next to each other. Do you see that? I'm going to back that one out. That's the only rule for this necklace, is I don't want any matching beads next to each other. But you could make it a little longer or a little shorter, but you want to make sure, because we're not going to put a clasp on it, that the length is long enough that you can put it on over your head, because we don't have a clasp. But that makes it very, very wearable. So I'm just going to keep feeding on beads until I have 30 inches of beads on my fire line. So I finished putting beads on our fire line and I put enough on so that I have 30 inches of the fire line beaded and it's all these beautiful random different beads just put on in any order and they look wonderful it's really pretty and now we want to finish the ends but we're not putting on a clasp so what we're going to do is we're going to tie knots in the fire line and I'll show you a special way to do that first I'm going to take the bead bug off of the other end and I'm going to carefully feed my needle in through the last bead. So this is the side I was beading on with the needle. 
This is the end of the necklace that had the bead bug. I'm going to go through the last bead here with the needle, just that last bead. I'm holding the end that came out of that bead and I'm pulling the other side through. So this is how we're joining our necklace ends up together. And now I can take off this needle. I have to pull that extra thread out and remove my needle. And I've got two ends of fire line here going through this bead. The side from here is going through this way and the side from here is going through that way. I want to check that I'm tight and don't have too much slack in my necklace and that feels good. You would sort of hang it and shake it, make sure it's all tight. And now what we want to do is tie a knot on either side of this bead. The kind of knot we're going to do is called a half hitch. It's kind of like you make a number four across the necklace thread. So that's sort of a four and then go around the back and up through the loop that you made on the front, the four shape on the front. Going around like that and I'm going to pull that tight and I'm going to do two of those. So that's called a double half hitch to do two of those. And it's a little bit tricky at first, but you'll get the hang of it. It's actually a knot that you probably tie all the time without thinking about it. So that's that loop I made on the front. I went around the back of the necklace thread and then I'm going to put those two knots together like that. And then what I want to do is put a little bit of glue on that knot. So this is GS Hypo. It is a jeweler's glue with a precision tip, which means the glue comes out of this tiny little tip here and makes it very easy to uh, put it right where you want it. I'm going to squeeze a little dot or blob of glue out there, and then I'm going to apply it right on top of that knot. I'm going to isolate the knot there and I'm just going to put a little glue on the knot and that's going to give us a little extra insurance and security for our knot. And you can use other brands of jeweler's glue but it helps a lot if it has a precision tip like that. And then I want to tighten up my strings a little bit. I could just pull them a little bit to tighten them up. I'm going to do the same kind of knot on this side. I have less room to work with now because I've tightened up the necklace, but I've given myself a tiny bit of slack so that I can get behind it. And again, I'm going to make that loop or four shape. And then I'm going to go behind. The loop is in front of the necklace. The end of the fire line is going to go behind the necklace string that we beaded, put all the beads on. I'm going up behind here. It's easier when you're not trying to show someone, but I'm trying to keep it visible for you. I'm going to go up behind here and bring that little end up through that loop. And then I want to make sure that when the knot ties, that it falls between those two beads and doesn't wind up over here. It would be a string across that bead. So there's that one tied. And I'm going to pull it a little bit tight that way. And then, like I said, we're doing a double half hitch, so we're going to do two, do two of those. I'm going to make another loop. And then I'm going to reach around underneath. Maybe this will work easier. Yeah, that's a little easier to see. So I went behind the string that the beads are on. The loop is in front of the string that the beads are on. And I'm going to pull that to make a knot. And then I'm going to reach in that little space. You can see I do have a little bit of slack in this necklace. As you get better, you can tighten that up. But I wanted you to be able to see the knot. There's a little drop of glue on there. I'm just going to put a little glue on my knot like that and that'll give us a little added security and then what I like to do is instead of cutting the strings here I like to take this end and just run it through and straighten it out since we don't have the needle on there I like to run it through a couple beads so this one I can stick in here whoops I can find the little hole that's where our knot was and just feed it through one or two beads and that way when you cut the end as it shortens up it'll stay inside that bead it won't be sticking out the side of your necklace this is the other end and I'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm just going to run it through one more bead a very pretty sort of antique glass bead here 
like that. Now I've got my necklace joined up. The knots are on either side of this pearl. And now I can cut these ends. I'm just using my little scissors here to cut the ends. And like I said, it doesn't need to be too tidy because these strings now will fall inside that other bead. And now it's an endless necklace because you can wear it with any side facing forward. You can put it on with no clasp. And that is how you make a long beaded endless necklace. Mm -hmm.